This episode of the Answer is Yes Baja Sessions is brought to you by Baja Bound Insurance Services. Driving to Mexico? You can buy and print out your Mexican auto insurance policy online in minutes with their easy-to-use website. They also have great travel information to help you plan your trip south of the border. Visit BajaBound.com. Hi, this is Ryan Thomas, and welcome to the Baja Sessions, where we chat with interesting people with interesting stories about all things related to the majestic peninsula of Baja, California. Our guest today is Greg Tracy. Greg is a stuntman and professional race car driver who grew up exploring Baja on a motorcycle. And like the majority of people on this show, myself included, can trace most good things in his life back to Baja in some capacity. Well, hey, Greg, how you doing today? Glad to have you on the show. Yeah, super pumped, Ryan. It's always good to talk to you. You know, it's one of the benefits about doing this podcast. Uh, I typically am, am interviewing people in some capacity that I know and or have met, which I guess someday maybe I ought to switch that up and meet some new people through this platform. But uh, it's a nice way to catch up with people that I haven't uh, spoken with in a while or learn something new about people that I have spoken with here recently. And uh, we were fortunate enough to run into each other down in Ensenada at the Nora 1000 and uh, it just kind of dawned on me that uh, you are an interesting person, and I met you through Baja, so it made sense to get you on this podcast. So I'm glad to have you here. Yeah, excited to be here. I mean, obviously that connection to Baja and you know the friendships that you develop with with people down there, I think, are a special bond, and always great to run into you. And even better to get a chance to talk to you again so quickly after the race. <laughs> it is kind of interesting. I, I recognized. Uh, when we lived there, you know, I lived there for about a decade with my wife in Southern Baja and um, the connections that you make with people, uh, it, it took me a while to figure it out. But um, especially the expatriate friendships that we created, they happen quick. And what I kind of came to grips with is, is that when you're a foreigner in a foreign land, um, that's an immediate connection to anybody, whether they're Canadian, Australian, American, we were living in Mexico, and so we, we made friends quickly, and it uh, didn't have to necessarily be when we were living there. It's interesting. You, you run into people down there. A lot of the people I've had on this show that um, were just kind of in a uh, – you, you met them in an in a interesting scenario, and it's like your guard is down or something when you're in a foreign place. I don't want to make it all about Baja, but it seems as if when you're somewhere outside of your comfort zone, you tend to make friends quicker and easier. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And, you know, I think that the only thing that I would add to that is there's something about Baja in particular that, you know, the people that you run into down there are, in, I would say, in general, a little more risk takers than your standard. You know, it's not like people that go down even just to go on vacation. They could go to Hawaii or a lot of other places that are a lot easier, you know, that have all the all the bells and whistles and things that people want sometimes when they go away, especially if they're not of the risk taking variety. But, um, you know, you never know. It's always an adventure. I mean, even when you're staying at a resort in Cabo, it's still an adventure in comparison to a lot of other places you might travel. So I think when people are living down there or racing down there or just traveling down there, that's, you know, you're kind of a little bit, it's a little wild West in a way it's that still has that part to it. And I think that probably, you know, that type of personality attracts similar people. So, yeah, it's interesting that the that is a common thing that people say when talking about about Baja and you know the Wild West comment. And as much as that is true, uh, and I don't disagree with it, I, I sometimes shudder when people say that because it implies this uh, no rules, kind of do what you want mentality. Which um, I, I'm not implying or, or inferring that that's what what you mean by that, but. I hesitate to to go with that Wild West comment because I don't want to perpetuate the the myth that there aren't laws, there are not rules, and and you just get to do whatever you want in Baja. Yeah, I mean, I told, and I agree with that a hundred percent. And I think even when you say that, of course, I'm sort of thinking of the, you know, the times I've been down there where all of a sudden you don't have running water, you don't have electricity. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about in Cabo, but when you're traveling from top to tip, those are the kinds of things you run into. You know. Yep. Yeah. Hey, you can't get gasoline here today, or some somebody's gonna suck it out of a jug, a jug for you, or somebody knows somebody that's gonna get you something. You know, I mean, it's one of my favorite things is even taking pictures of of um, interesting ways that people have found to fix equipment or 
rig up a gas tank because the gas tank has a hole in it, so they're using a water bottle and, you know, some hose or whatever, right? I mean, it's amazing. Like, it's amazing people, and I totally agree with you on that. The lawless part, I think the most true Baja people when they're down there are are pretty quick to put their foot down if they see some of that going on. Yeah. Um, certainly not Certainly not any of the regulars or people that affectionately call Baja home or the people down there friends, you know, aren't, aren't that type. Perfect way to put that. So, you know, so my intro to this show is is um, where we talk with interesting people with interesting stories. And uh, you definitely I, I've known you for a little while here and I know a few things about you. You are a um, well, you're a Hot Wheels driver, which what kid that's uh man kid, even at 50, doesn't know Hot Wheels in the orange tracks and the loops. And so at one point, I want to make sure we, we discuss uh, a bit of, of that part of your life. Um, I also know you are a stuntman, and uh, I, I can't make me not think about the television show The Fall Guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Love then that show. Uh, I also know you're a motorcycle racer and rider um, with some records at Pikes Peak, the hill climb there. So I want to make sure we t- touch on all of those things. Um, but before we dive into that, you I, I ran into you in Ensenada at the Nora race, and you were there with your son. And I ironically so was i my son's a little bit younger than your son is but tell me about the time uh, that you spent with your son at that race it seems as if the short conversations we've had um that is it's been a special time for you absolutely i mean that's yeah this was actually my second year racing down there with with my son lane who's 21 this year and we did in 2018 similar in the the utv stock turbo class which is a perfect opportunity to go down there and race not spend a ton of money, have a car that goes quick. You can actually be up, you know, inside of the top 20 for sure um, without necessarily spending crazy amounts of money. But really it's just a, you know, ultimate father-son bonding situation. I mean, obviously we're out there racing and you're calling out notes and, and he's trying to navigate and get me get me down the, you know, from wherever to wherever. Oh, wait a minute. So you didn't let him drive ever? No, I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the funny thing was, the year before, I, I didn't let him drive until the very last stage, where I actually had to navigate for him. They didn't have the the book like they typically have, so completely worthless on my part. I mean, we went about thirty feet, and I had no idea. I was already completely lost. I'm just just trying to figure it out and get there, which he did. So um, this year, he was a little more enthused about getting to drive more. And I think he probably put in about three hundred miles of the race, which was oh, awesome. Right on. And, yeah. You know, for me, it was just we've spent a lot of time riding in the desert together, and he grew up uh, with both. We grew up uh, going to Lake Havasu, and um, so he's he's fairly desert savvy. But Baja is a different thing, and it was really exciting for me to be able to sit uh, right seat, basically navigating for him and calling stuff out, and not necessarily just calling out, "Hey, there's a a left turn or potential danger spot that's pointed out in, in the book," um, but also being able to talk about some of the things that I see looking forward, like. Hey, notice that the terrain's changing the colors. It's a different color uh, half a mile up. Most likely it's going to be a different surface. Expect it to be more sl- you know, sl- slippery or you're going into a wash, so expect whoops at the bottom and whoops on the exit. And you know, just all those things that you learn from years and years of racing down there and, and just riding motorcycles from the, from the top to the tip 15, 20 times with my buddies. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to learn. And so it was a great experience from that standpoint. And then obviously any free times that we had on transit stages and all the nights together, I mean, time you get to drink beer with your 21 year old son and drink some shots of tequila and <laughs> talk about, talk about the day's races is pretty cool. Yeah. And just about life and what, you know, taking chances and just, you know, all the things that are so critical. I think that a lot of people are missing out on nowadays. So to get that opportunity to do that with my son was super special. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things I, I think back to my life growing up and, and I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to be involved in motorsports from a young age and, and specifically motorsports in Baja. And uh, so many lessons I learned, you know, resourcefulness and, and um, just the whole concept of, you know, you can't there's, there's nobody to help you here. So, you know, you got to figure stuff out on your own fix it if if it breaks or or don't break it so that you don't have to fix it um know where you're going or figure out where you're going and stop and ask questions learn the language that was a big one for me you know my dad uh yeah. my dad never really spoke spanish but he was very much a big reason why i actually learned to to uh speak the language uh, the spanish language um, right 
So yeah, the whole that that ability to connect with um, family in an environment like that is is priceless for sure. And I'm glad you got the opportunity to do that. So, uh, but shifting gears, um, racing in the dirt, racing uh, in, on four wheels. I know you've got some background on two wheels, and I guess nowadays it, it is pavement, but it wasn't always pavement. And I'm talking about Pikes Peak. Um, tell me a little yeah, bit about P- that. I haven't really ever heard P- much of your story there. Yeah, so Pikes Peak, obviously, I mean, for people, well, people that don't necessarily know about that race, it's in Colorado, and it's it's a road that was built to the top of Pikes Peak, which is a 14,000-foot-high uh, mountain in Colorado, just out of Colorado Springs. So this road, once a year, they have a race that starts at 9,000 feet, goes to 14,000 feet. It's 156 turns and uh, 12.42 miles. Guardrails in a couple of the slower corners, but for the most part, it's anywhere from 50 feet to a few thousand feet off the side if you make a mistake. And um, it's the second oldest race to the Indy 500, so I think it's only a couple couple years. I want to say that we're coming up on the hundredth race there. Wow, which is pretty pretty amazing. But um, yeah, so going all the way back to 1996, I had raced motorcycles professionally and then went into racing cars really full time. Was trying to make it to the Indy 500, which is you know, ultimately kind of how I ended up becoming a stunt stunt man and stunt driver, but um, Pikes Peak came along and it was just something I always wanted to do. And, you know, one of the, one of the ways that I use to force myself to do something is I just start telling everybody that I'm going to do it. Even though I haven't made any, any plans or laid any, any of the groundwork down. And that's what I did for that particular race that year and went there and ended up winning it in the 250 motorcycle class. That was when it was all dirt. Uh, fast forward, this will be my 20th year. I've had a couple, couple of years that I've missed. Um, but I've managed to, you know, I've won it seven times, uh, six times on a motorcycle and, and once in a car. And I'm actually the, at this point, the only person that's ever broke the, the elusive 10 minute mark on a motorcycle and driving a car. So it's been a, been an amazing experience. I mean, it's crazy how fast we're going up there now. I mean, I, I'm really expecting this year I'm racing in the, the electric or the electric car, but in the unlimited class and really shooting for like a mid eight minute time so car has a top speed of 160 and Jeez. Cr- crazy amounts of acceleration obviously with the all-wheel drive and the electric part racing for a team uh, called palatop out of oregon that makes these amazing race car chassis and it's a new thing for them on the electric side but um yeah so looking forward to that but again it's like it's 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 what's so funny is it's obviously the exact opposite of baja where i think this last year's baja 1000 was running the spec trophy truck uh for Ham and Meredith, and I was in the car for 14 straight hours. So, if everything goes right, I'll be in the car for eight minutes <laughs> for this one. So, it's a little different mindset, but so many of the same things about putting it down. And you know, obviously, your focus has to just be so sharp, and it has to be spot on for that entire time. Yeah, you know, I used to joke with people when they talk about endurance races, endurance sports car races. You know, oh, it's a right. four-hour race, and I'm thinking, yeah. I'm just getting warmed up at four hours. All right. In Baja. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. So, Bikes Peak is is a big part of your background, and uh, then the whole stuntman thing. You alluded to it here that that uh, in your quest to get to Indy, somehow um, you got distracted and became a, a stuntman. Tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, surprisingly enough, it all kind of circles back to um, Baja. All that seems like it usually does, but I grew up with Mouse McCoy, who, um, you know, of Dust of Glory fame, not only in the movie, but as a director. And we were we were best friends. We raced motocross together. Our, our dads actually were on the same motorcycle uh, team, club team, back when they were young. And um, so Mouse and I were living together at the time. I was really racing cars full time and trying to make my way towards Indy 500. And he had gotten into the film business and ultimately into the stunt side i had a pretty substantial crash at the night before the indy 500 in 1993 that uh, ended up breaking my cheeks and um you know bruising my brain breaking my wrist a few other things and funny enough while i was healing up he's like yeah you gotta try the stunt driving thing it's a great gig you come out and check it out and at that time things were kind of transitioning to you know, not so much like where guys were were sort of good at everything, but but not great at a particular thing. To to more focus, you know, just specifically a car stunt guy or fight guys or you know fall guys type of thing. So um, as much as I've gotten to do a few of those other things, predominantly I'm I'm in a car when it's when it's stunt stuff. So you know, I've probably done 20 plus movies, and um, I'm a member of a team called Drivers Inc., which we had a bunch of the Drivers Inc. team guys down there at Nora this year racing, which was a lot of fun. 
but um, so we do, you know, pretty.